Alright, hello everybody and good evening. Welcome back to Love Money and Rock and Roll. Am I coming through okay? Alright, sweet. 
Uh, I think everything is zeroed, so I don't have to worry about uh, synchronizing everything. So let's just get back into it. I think I uh, left off at the beginning of another day. And what I've been seeing is, um, I think the path, because, uh, um, especially with this path, uh, it seems to be more focused on Himitsu and uh, Catherine, and just kind of sets aside Ellie and Kagome, so I guess that's a different path that uh, I didn't choose, so. Oh well. I'll just do the Ellie run on my own time, or maybe a Discord run, uh, Discord stream. Let's put my last one here. And so I ran. I ran so far away. Left the house and simply walked wherever my feet would take me. My pace wasn't particularly fast, but not slow either. I watched the road and the traffic lights, even avoided running into people. But it was all done on autopilot. My mind was elsewhere. As time went on, I started leaning towards the Mitsu. Yeah, yeah. Because Catherine, I mean... Catherine had her chance. Let's face it. <laughs> Maybe in the dream I was chasing... God damn it. Also, this guy. This guy is a freaking idiot. This dude cannot make up his mind. Even if I try to make it up for him. He is! He's more indecisive than I am. Anyways. Chasing with a full understanding that I would never catch her. Life can be a strange thing. It's only strange if you make it strange. Katya lived just a couple kilometers away from here. I could just go and ring her doorbell. Even if it was too early and she was asleep. I could scale the fire escape, fire escape and climb into her window. And then I could tell her everything I wanted to say. With beautiful words, elegant phrases, genuinely impassionate. No, no, dude. And she would listen to me and understand. Understand. And forgive me. What in the hell? Why should I feel guilt? Thank you. Finally, reality is like, actually... Knocking some sense into you, hopefully. I whispered quietly. Or so I thought. No, you said that out loud. You have no inner monologue. You'll be fine before. The <laughs> You'll be fine before the wedding. Came a snide comment from some old lady as she deftly slipped under my arm. I stumbled away, startled, and picked up my pace. Oh, that's a nice garden. Soon I found myself in the park. It had been a while since I last came here. I used to go here with Katya. She used to say this was the only place in this city where we could be alone. Or maybe she didn't, and I just assumed that's what she thought. Catherine never liked the public to show her feelings. And sometimes it seemed like she was embarrassed that someone would see us together. The park itself was more or less a classical Japanese garden. I always thought that, in a way, nature was the same. I always thought that, in a way, nature was the same everywhere. Sure, Earth had different climates, and trees would grow on one continent, and completely refused to take root in another. But in general, it was the same vegetation, the same soil, the same murmuring streams. Maybe that was because we rarely perceived nature as something discreet. We may often think about age of a think about the age of a particular tree, but no one counts the blades of grass in the meadow or the grains of sand in the beach. Neither is a plucked flower perceived by us as the end of a separate biological entity. It's just a process. It'll wither, rot, and turn into something new. I walked to our favorite gazebo and sat down on the bench. Rare yellowish leaves floated back and forth in the small lake. Here. In a forest, you could say. The arrival of autumn wasn't as apparent, even though the temperature was a couple of degrees lower than this city. I probably still wasn't used to, uh, used to summer like warmth in the middle of September. <laughs> <laughs> I 
There is no such thing as summer-like warmth over here in Virginia. Like summer-like humidity. I swear, it's like the worst in, uh, in August and September. I'm like the ass end of summer. What was the weather then, I wondered. It had been two years. Two years? Is that a lot for plants? What about century-old oaks? Oh, excuse me, I'm already yawning. What the hell's up with me? What about me? I sank into my memories. My first summer in high school had ended. To be honest, I no longer remember what I felt, thought, strived for at the time. Only that I was simpler, more naive. <laughs> it was a normal school day. Fundamentally, our high school dif uh, differed from its middle uh, bleh, from its middle counterpart only in name, and was located on the same grounds. I knew many of the students who had been in the same class before. But besides my good chubby friend Kyosuke was sitting my, sitting next to me. Don't you think it's weird we've ended up in the same class however, however many times now? Are you implying that it's not a coincidence? I made one of those grins that practically screamed, Come on, ask me what I mean. I I'm just stating a fact. Because if I thought you arranged it somehow, I'd start to feel weird. Scared even. Why me, exactly? Who else could it be? He huffed, mumbling something in response. I think we got a nice class here. I looked around the classroom, but my eyes didn't linger on anyone in particular. Probably because I didn't have any particular ties to any of them. What do you think about... He moved closer to me and whispered. The girls? Well, I don't really know. I'd lie if I said I didn't think about it. Any normal guy my age does. But thoughts were where it ended. It was hard for me to even imagine myself next to someone other than Himitsu. Even though I didn't think about her that way either. If you were to rank them, who'd get first place? Ratings are your thing, piss off. I cracked back in good nature. You're obviously hiding something. Why would I be hiding something? SJ, hey! How you doing, man? I thought you'd be, like, in, um... Race stream, or did she stop streaming? Thank you for the lurk. Is she even streaming? I don't think she's live anymore. She's playing. Hmm. I thought she was streaming earlier. Some uh, Destiny. Anyways. Oop. There we go. Fine, I'll start then. What do you think about? He raised his finger and started to run around the classroom as if choosing a toy in his shop's window. Winters, let's say. Catherine is sitting behind the front desk. Her back toward us. Her long hair lay so smoothly that it resembled a frozen waterfall. Although coldness was also inherent to her character. At least, that's how it seemed to me. Uh, I don't really know. I absolutely did know. If I were to answer Kiyosuke's question seriously, which I never would, Catherine Winters would be at the top of my list. Why? You're both foreigners? Don't you think that's a bit chauvinistic? What? I said the last word in English. <laughs> because I read it in some sci-fi novel and simply didn't know how to say it in Japanese. Apparently the vocabulary of the heroes in Kyosuke's manga was a bit poorer. I'm calling you a dickweed. You do realize your reaction's a little suspicious? Well, fine, what do you want to hear? Raider out of ten. Let's say... Seven? So low? He flung his arms disappointedly. What should I give a ten to each and every one of them? Uh, should I give a ten to each and every one of them? Having a top score wouldn't mean shit then. We're not in the first grade where everyone gets A's in their art class. 
I didn't get any A's. You're a different story. I'm talking about normal people. Oh, is that so? Should I pass your score over to Miss Winters then? You stood up in front of the chair, theatrically, slowly. What are you doing? Come down and sit. Of course, I didn't believe that. Kiyosuke already intended to do that. First and foremost, I didn't believe he had the courage. Scared, are you? I'm really not. I'm just... Why? Let's call it putting your personal life in order. Otherwise, you'll be alone forever. Look who's talking. Also, didn't you think to ask her opinion first? Well, you are quite the guy. The cock of the walk. Is that a phrase? That's a phrase. That's the first I've ever heard of it. He grinned and finally sat back down. When you're the one saying that, it just sounds wrong. We laughed together. Okay. I do not know what that word is, Mike. <laughs> You'll have to enlighten me on that. But my initial idea of that is, uh, I'm gonna do a Back to the Future reference. He biffed it. Oh, butchered! How is that? <laughs> Butcher. Oh god. There's times when autocorrect would be very helpful. This would be one of those times. But her but verd hit I don't know. Lessons ended and I was on my way home with Mitsu. I couldn't get Kyosei's classmate ranking out of my head. Or at least the rank of one classmate, Catherine Winters. I had paid attention to her before. Maybe it was actually because she wasn't Japanese, but m more likely because she was beautiful, elegant, clever, and possessed a kind of mysterious charm. Cock of the walk. Big man. Okay. I've never heard that phrase before. At the time, I didn't realize she was simply more of... Ma I thought I didn't realize that she was simply more mature and feminine than other girls. And in a sense, Kyosuke was right. I was hiding, even if it was just from myself, that I liked Catherine. Which is easy to do if you don't think about a girl in the context, context of a relationship. We talk about the beauty of actresses on TV screens, but few people actually fall in love with them. Oh, <laughs> uh, How many simps are there in this world? It's another matter when the actress is your classmate. That makes her way more human, in a sense, and also available. Not just a 2D picture, but a real girl you can at the very least talk to. Uh, Listen, do you like anyone in your class? Oh, I like your uniform in that. I asked Himitsu, continuing the flow of thoughts of my thoughts aloud. But to her, this question was completely unexpected. Like? What do you mean? Well... Any of the guys... I know, right? Yeah, for those of you who don't know, I'm a total sucker for a girl with a choker. Why do you ask, Nico? Uh, I just talked with Kiyosuke for break. New class, new school, you know. So... Do you like someone? At the time, I didn't even think about Himitsu's feelings. Didn't think the conversation might be unpleasant for her. I was just talking about a normal day with a normal school day with a friend. Uh, I don't really know. I grinned stupidly, scratched the back of my head, and turned away to hide my embarrassment. It's a tasteful one, not those thought jokers, although those aren't bad. 
it, it, it depends on the girl and the outfit. Most of the time, I prefer like a simple one, like the one that uh, she's wearing. It's nice. I'm just trying not to make it too eggle. Uh, way don't overdo it. Really, that's just, you overdo it. It's 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 not gonna it's not gonna work. There you go. Mitsu said angrily. You wouldn't have brought this up for no reason. All right, my bad. Maybe a certain American. American, huh? Mitsu trolled. Is she pretty? What do you think? I'm talking about those plastic ones. Plastic? That sounds uncomfortable. I know of lace, velvet, and leather. I've never heard of plastic ones. Hmm. What do you think? Oh, she's certainly not going to like you. Why is that? I asked with indignation. Because you're lazy, rude, and insensitive. Also sloppy and scruffy. Imagine if you saw what she saw what goes on in your room. You just said all this in good nature, but her words still got to me. Why, thank you for the compliments. But that's the truth. You can't be offended by the truth. Truth. Yeah, right. I grumbled. In all seriousness, though, he just said a, little, uh, said a little later, her voice now completely different. What do you think about that girl? <sighs> I don't think anything yet. So you're just going to watch from a distance and do nothing? I don't know. That's not right, I think. If you'd like someone, you should tell them. Would you? Me? We're talking about you right now. Maybe I will. But time passed and it became obvious that I had to do something. I thought of Catherine I thought of Catherine more and more often, and the thoughts were starting to become frankly obtrusive. At first, even approaching her seemed like an impossible task to me, so inaccessible she appeared. Besides, Catherine barely talked to our uh, to our other classmates either. At first, I thought it was just due to her personality, but sometimes things would just get simpl things would get simply ridiculous. One time, working in the pair, she went an entire lesson without saying a word. Proudly, with her head held high and the sense of dignity to her, just like a real lady, but still silently, and she ended up with an F. It would be one thing if there was all, if that's all there, that all was all there was to it, but it was an English lesson. It was hard to doubt Catherine's knowledge of it, but a, a school is a social institution. A school is a social institution where both the result and the method matter. You could solve math, math problems with a calculator, but you was, wouldn't get an A for it. <coughs> Clearly, I've never seen an American uh, American high school. In the end, Katya turned up her nose and left the class. I felt like it was my chance, and complaining about a terrible, complaining about a terrible stomach ache to the teacher, went after her. We found ourselves a typo. Giving an F to a native is messed up. That's exactly why I don't take Russian. I caught up to her in a, uh, on the staircase, and awkwardly tried to start a conversation. Catherine just gave me a look of distrust and said, Yeah. Her Japanese grades weren't exactly amazing either, to say the least. And thus I found, thus finally, I found Catherine Winters' weak spot. At lunch, I approached her, smiled, and started speaking Japanese as legibly as I could ma uh, manage. Hi. Sorry for saying this out of the blue, but I noticed you were having a hard time with Japanese. Mind if I hope? My name is Nikolai, by the way. She raised her surprised eyes at me and answered coldly. Thank you. But I'm fine. I mean, 
I understand that it's really stressful to end up in a foreign country and a new school too, but I've just been living in Japan for a while now. I'm fine. She interrupted me in the same tone. You know, the language matters the most. The faster you learn it, the faster you'll adapt it. Catherine's look robbed me of all resolve to continue. Or not. It's smooth. From the first moment of our acquaintance, Miss Winters made it clear that she only saw me as yet another annoying classmate. She wasn't any good at making friends, and it weren't, I wondered more and more often if her lack of Japanese skills was really the reason for it. However, besides disappointment, I was also overflowing with enthusiasm, a desire to get my way at all costs. One day in the canteen, I unceremoniously sat across Catherine without an invitation. Bon appetit, or rather, itadakimasu. She didn't respond. She even, ended, she even seemed to pretend that I wasn't there. I just wanted to say I know we got off on the wrong foot. My bad. I shouldn't have imposed myself. It's not your fault. Catherine immediately switched to English. I just don't need help with Japanese. My knowledge is quite sufficient to survive the next three years here. Do you really hate it here that much? I responded in English as well, in anticipation of a reaction. Catherine didn't even bat an eye. Uh, how do I put it? It seemed like I'd been reaching, reading too much of Kiyosuke's manga. Why did I even think she thought that I didn't know English? In any case, now she was much friendlier than the first time. At least by her standards. You know, at first I was really afraid of this new country. Everything was so... big. Although, I had it easier, of course, being a child and all. Continuing to demonstrate her utter, uh, utter lack of interest, Catherine finally joined the conversation. How old were you? Seven. Can you imagine? I, I said enthusiastically. I can. I was seven once too. So, what brought you here? To Japan, I mean, not the canteen. My mom is a diplomat. Oh, really? Well, my parents are engineers. They were Kobayashi Corporation. Heard of it? I have. Catherine kept poking her fork into something that probably used to be a beef roast. So, you're from the Soviet Union, then? Yes, ma'am. Nikolai Anakin, at your service! Our countries don't have the best relationship. Why do you think ours will be any better? She smiled. If barely. Well, politics aren't my strong suit, but I don't think the common people should suffer, just, uh, suffer because of the decisions of a bunch of idiots in power. I immediately realized that it was correct to say in power, but Catherine didn't even give, didn't give me a chance to correct myself. That's a very shallow understanding of politics, Nikolai. Well, I did say it's not my strong suit. So, you advocate for world peace and friendship among all peoples? That'd be better, wouldn't it? I guess. Well, what about you then? Why are we even talking about politics? You're the one that brought it up! You st see? N no, I didn't. You said our countries didn't even have the, don't have the best relationship. Well, let's say so. It was nice talking to you. Catherine stood up a tray, <laughs> took her tray and left. Not that I was going to stop her. This round had clearly been lost. Several more days had passed, and I was waiting for Catherine at the school gates to go home together. Yeah, right. Next, I'd be offering to carry her backpack. I probably has still hadn't realized at the time, but my attempts to get closer to her were transforming into a sort of competition between the two of us. Oh, hey! Going home? Me too! What a coincidence. The only result of my actions so far was the fact that she started to show more emotions. Most of which, more or less, fit under the definition of the word sarcasm. Uh, are you taking the subway? Yes, and for some reason I feel like so are you.
soon the twist will show. Cut him activate nickel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for your information, I could go on foot, but since we've got ourselves in this coincidence, I don't mind at all. Don't get me wrong. Ah, well, never. God forbid. For a while, we walked in silence to pretended to harbor a grudge against Catherine, and she wasn't one to start a, car a conversation. Or so it seemed to me. Your English is pretty good. I read a lot. What do you read? Science fiction, mostly. Sheckley, Clark. Simak? Simak? I don't know, I'm not familiar with that one. Heinlein? I don't like... This bitch. I don't like science fiction. Well, girls rarely do. I can think of a few. Do you know many? A couple. Meets you from... Really? News to me. All the more reason to go with Hamitsu rather than Cavern. I see. That's I don't I, I don't recognize uh, Simac or Simac. From that moment on, my presence no longer interested her. What books do you like? Books? I can't really say. All kinds, which really translates as none. My patience ran out. But listen, maybe you should stop acting like this. And how am I acting exactly? Catherine even stopped. You know, full well that I like you, then why all this? If you said no right away, we wouldn't need to put on this act. You like me? That's when I grew embarrassed. Isn't that obvious? Not to a girl. Didn't you say you had a lot of experience with them? I said nothing like that. And anyway, so, you want to date me? Well, yeah, that's a given. Seems like... Uh serialized stuff. Oh, okay. Alright. Alright, what? I asked, dumbfounded. Let's date. Just like that? No, I think that'd, that'd be way too easy. Well, you did say could have said no right away. I chose to say yes. To be fair, Mike, this is the flashback. This is when they first met. So this already happened. <laughs> Catherine gifted me with a genuine smile. Well, okay then. I almost asked, what should we do now? By the way, we're here. And indeed, the station showed up from behind the corner. You must have a lot to think about, and since you don't live far from here. See you tomorrow then, boyfriend. Catherine smashed an even cuter smile and left me standing in a complete stupor. Today, I know that this kind of behavior was at least somewhat normal for her, but at the time I was so shocked that I didn't even feel any particular joy. Maybe I'd feel something similar if a... 100 kilogram piece of concrete fell on the ground a meter away from me. It's nice that it didn't fall on my head, but the following days were each one better than the other. I grew closer with Catherine, and even though I didn't quite understand why she was like that, she became less arrogant. One day we were sitting in the park embracing each other. America doesn't have parks like this one. Really? Seems like a pretty normal park to me. No, not normal at all. It's beautiful. Quiet. Peaceful. Well, unless there's something in Japan that you like. Catherine's laugh was barely audible. 
By the way, did you know that in Russia you'd be called Katya? Katya? Well, that sounds weird. Well, I think that's really cute. I'll be calling you that from now on. No way. You don't, you don't like it? You'd be called Nick in America. You already called me Nick. She didn't respond. Only sank deeper into my shoulder. We'll leave this place, right? Later, when we finish school? For America? I couldn't say the prospect made me too happy. It seemed that my psyche wouldn't withstand another big relocation. For America, or somewhere else? For the USSR? I don't know. We need to get married first. W why's that? They won't give me a visa otherwise. My mom works at the embassy. We can come up with something. Do you think she'd be happy that instead of going to college, her daughter... Who said instead? Kanji asked with indignation. Well, we need to live on something. You'll go to work then. You don't want to study anymore either way. Sir, yes, sir. She laughed again. Is that a genuine laugh? Do you really want to do all of that with me? The question surprised me, and I looked at her, but Catherine lowered her head. Well, of course. Wouldn't be here otherwise. Here? In this park? Or in Japan? On this earth? Kyosuke invites me to the Yamato crew all the time. I get the reference. You have weird friends. And you're also weird. My friends are totally normal. By the way, Imitsu's wanted to meet you for a while now. Your childhood friend? The half-Russian one? Yeah, I've told you about her. You must have way more in common with her. Even if I thought about it, I couldn't say what a, what interested I shared. Couldn't say what interests the typo I shared with Himitsu. What are you hinting at? Nothing at all. She abruptly stood up from the bench and stretched her hand out to me. There's a special offer at the bar today. Buy two burgers for the price of three and get a third one for free. You're pulling my leg. I grabbed her hand and pulled it to me. And then I'm craving a burger. I think, yeah, I think that's a... Wouldn't that be a fourth one? I don't know. There's a, there's a weird uh, pricing in that. Did I read that right? Buy two burgers for the price of three. Oh, okay. She was playing him. But Catherine meeting Mitsu was inevitable, and honestly, it was surprising that it didn't happen earlier. Yet another school day was coming to its end, and I was about to go home together with Catherine. To my place, this time. We'd been dating for several weeks at that point, and the initial strongest burst of passion was starting to wear off. Naturally, it didn't stop us from spending to all our free time together. All our free time together, I know I'll speak. But that day, Mitsu met us at the gates of the school. I didn't realize, like, how much of a height difference there was. Nico, hello. She bowed way too low, and I heard to in introduce Catherine to her. So, um, this is Mitsu. Mitsu, this is Catherine. Catherine? She was about to bow again, but decided against it under my stern glare. Come on, why the formalities? Kari? Chen? Mitsu asked, unsure. Katya only smiled back in embarrassment. 
Nico, you never told me she was so tall. Okay, she's tall. She's a tall one. Itsu whispered to me. Never crossed my mind, to be honest. Where do you study? In middle school. Here. It's on the same grounds. I studied there, too. Oh, that's Nikolai. In middle school. Oh, it's on the same grounds. I know. See, she usually gets sick a lot and went to school a year later than me. Interesting. Catherine frowned slightly. Yeah, she always wanted to be in the same class as me, but it never worked out. I think Mitsu can speak for herself. Katya suddenly interrupted me. Mitsu, meanwhile, was just standing nearby, picking at the ground with the tip of her shoe. She looked even smaller now when compared to Catherine. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The awkwardness soured the meeting of the mo two most important girls in my life. Uh, how about we celebrate your acquaintance then? Nico, he just said in a whisper, but now with reproach. Why? That, why that's actually a good idea. Don't you like it? Catherine asked her. Only if there won't be any alcohol. Alcohol? Does he usually... Not at all. I wet my hands in denial. Received and understood. Thank you for the information. I, I didn't. How much learn? How much more I'm going to learn about you, boyfriend? She asked in English. Mitsu wasn't that good at the language, and this time Catherine was actually trying to hide the meaning of her words from others. Okay, it happened once or twice. She's just worried about me. Worried, huh? Katya immediately shifted her gaze to Mitsu. In any case, nice to meet you. M me too. While the three of us were walking home, I was scolding Mitsu. Why start with that again? Why say all that? Who asked you? I didn't even say anything. Mitsu was about to burst into tears. Aww! I should add that she even used to be more awkward around people. Why you gotta make the poor girl cry? What the hell's wrong with you? You have to think before you speak. Meet me out to be an alcoholic or something. Anyway. I relented. Just don't do that anymore. The entire time, Catherine was watching us carefully, without a word. I was speaking quietly and wasn't sure she had heard about the conversation, what the conversation was about exactly. You're quite close. Uh, naturally. We've known each other for so many, many years. It's like a stupid little sister to me. Oh, don't say that, you fucking idiot. Little sister, huh? Convenient. You want me to be the older one, then? You can call me Onisan. Uh, three st What, 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 what is this turning into? A threesome with two sisters at once? Now that'd be something, wouldn't it? Lucky man. She finished off with her snipe remark with a juicy slap on my ass. Good thing Mitsu didn't notice anything, at least. Truth be told, I like Catherine's particular sense of humor, but sometimes it crossed all possible lines, and not only by Japanese standards. This bitch. When we reached home, he too made that stupid bow again and bid us farewell. Uh, I think I'll go. I, I don't want to be a bother. Come on, you're not bothering us at all. Right, Nick? Yeah, of course. I thought I'd look, I thought I looked like an idiot. Even though for a moment I enjoyed Katya's idea with the two sisters. This fucking guy. But uh, if you have something to do... Yeah, it has been a pleasure meeting you two. He addressed Catherine. Got an interesting friend. That everyone could put up with someone like you for so many years. Alright, would you turn? Mm. If they were both into it.
And by into it, I mean into me, not the whole like weird sister. Anyways, indeed, Catherine is right. <laughs> she has yet to she has yet to know what to what extent. I was in the middle of a dream. To <laughs> I suddenly returned to reality and looked around. The park was just still just as quiet and autumn appropriately chilly. The clock and my stomach together reminded me that it was high time for lunch. Old 40k joke. Okay. I was walking through the city, feeling detached from reality. Like Alice, stuck in a wonderland of memories, which by comparison made all the danger looming over me seem much less important. As if the best had already passed, and nothing good awaited me in the future. So what sense was there in worrying? Okay, well, are, are we back to the present? Hey there, Koya, come on in. Long time no see. Today the bartender seemed to be the embodiment of hospitality. I'm just here for lunch. But, but a moment. He was as eager to talk as always, but there were more visitors than usual, and he had to get back to work after bringing me my order. I was eating the ramen with gusto and noted once again that in all in all it was no worse than, than a real Japanese ramen shop. Despite all the bartender's peculiar, the, bleh, peculiarities, you couldn't deny that he knew his trade. He just had to remove that irritating bell over the door. Its sound didn't just annoy me, it seemed to make my nerves themselves strain and tighten like strings. Meanwhile, someone I never expected to see here entered the bar. It was Saya with her classmates. She looked around, choosing a table, noticed me, whispered something to her girlfriends, and then headed towards me with a clear determination. Uh, what are you doing here? That's what I should be asking you, Aniko Anokin. She sat across from me quite unceremoniously and looked me right in the eye. Uh, what about me? I just dropped by for lunch. This place has wonderful ramen, by the way. Wonderful ramen, by the way. My rec recommendation. Her presence was making me uncomfortable, and I didn't even really know why. Perhaps because of all the memories. Wait, hold up. What, what, what's our history with this chick? Catherine was right about Himitsu at the time, and apparently I started to feel ashamed again. And Saya was only making things worse. But you weren't at school today. Keeping an eye on me? I'm flattered. She just call you best boy and you liked it. <laughs> Don't play dumb. Also, you're out also uh, you're also out early, judging by the time. Our class is already over for your interest. Oh. I raised my eyebrows. Naturally, I wasn't interested at all. Mitsu was worried about you and went home. Why'd she worry about me? Here I am. I'm not keen. Just call me Nick, alright? I told you. For some reason, coming from her in particular, these formalities were especially sickening. Anakin, you know what I'm talking about. An 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 I don't know. I feel like I mispronounced that somewhere out. I can't remember why. No, I don't. And even if I did, I don't think it's any of your business. Worrying about a friend is very much my business. Or friends. I couldn't object. In any case, you don't know all the details of our relationship. I don't see what details can matter when the relationship hurts one of the other, one of the parties. I bit my lip and turned away, not even trying to hide my irritation. And now there's this foreigner girl, too. What about her? I immediately looked back at Saya, gripped my teeth, but she remained calm. Her return was quite timely. Now your life has no time left for Himitsu. Now that is definitely none of your business. So you're not denying it? I'm not going to get into a pointless argument with you. 
You don't need to argument with, uh, with me, but think about Himitsu. I do, okay? I do. I almost added all the time. What do you even know? I even let out, I let out a sigh and threw a greedy glance at the alcohol stand. Two o'clock is the perfect time. Saya smirked. Turns out she was also quite attentive. Sure, I knew in my head that there was a fair bit of truth to her words, but I could, just couldn't agree. If only for my own sake. Listening to you makes my ears bleed. A shot would make it at least bearable. You're hopeless. Maybe that's why Himitsu likes me. Ever thought of that? So you know it and keep acting like that? Relax. I'm joking. There are things that you can't joke about. Well, excuse me for not being a prude. Or having much of a conscience. Seriously, what do you want me to say? Why do you act like that? You know what, I'm gonna be honest. Alright, she's... She, apparently there's obviously some history with them. And... It's time to, like, let... Get it off the chest. Maybe she'll have better understanding of things. And so is Hibitsu. We've known each other since childhood. You know. We have a kind of... How do I say it? Connection between us. Ten years. That's no joke. Half our lives. More even. Maybe you want the best for her, but it's not that simple. What's so difficult about her life? Don't you think you're the one making it difficult? It's a relationship. Things happen. Relationship? She smirked. That's an interesting choice of words, Anakin. Although, alright. I won't bother you. She stood up and headed to her girlfriends. In reality, Saya hadn't said anything new and there wasn't anything, any reason to be upset with her. Mostly, I was angry with myself. The girl had hit a sore spot. With great precision, I must say. Meanwhile, Himitsu's classmates weren't in a hurry to leave. Having finished their milk cocktails and ice cream, they kept sitting there chatting about the casual stuff. Milk cocktails, don't you mean like uh, milkshakes? Or is there something I'm missing here? I was throwing rare annoyed glances at them, but Saya was making a point to ignore me. To be honest, I simply found it hard to get up and walk past them to the exit. That would seem seemingly mean awkwardly. Oh, excuse me. That would simply mean acknowledging my defeat and fleeing the battlefield. It was silly, but I kept standing, there, kept sitting there on the to the bitter end, having chewed through even the chopsticks. Finally, the merry band got up from the table and prepared to leave. Saya shot me a farewell look, scoring her face into a snide grimace. She had to be thinking she'd won. Jeez, Koya, who was that? The bartender appeared to me appeared next to me at once. If witch burning were still in fashion these days, I'd definitely report her to the Inquisition. So that was just a friend of Mitsu's. Ah, I see. He said thoughtfully and sat down beside me. No, actually I don't. Maybe that's for the better. I paid my bill and left the bar. I was having a hard time getting my emotions in order after the reprimanding Saya, after the reprimanding Saya had given me. Sometimes you understand you're wrong and can even accept your mistakes somewhere deep inside, but if someone points them out, you can't help but argue. Yet another crazy day was coming to an end. I got caught in the rain while, uh, while on my way back home and barged into the kitchen defeated. Immediately f and immediately faced Mitsu's disapproving stare. There's probably no point asking where you've been, Nico. Probably not. I agreed, trying not to sound rude, and walked past her. I gotta take a shower or I'll get sick. Uh, 
A hot dinner greeted me when I left the bathroom. After everything, I could only marvel at Mitsu's patience. Not everyone could put up with someone like you for that many years. Could have said it better myself. Aww. I'm sorry for disappearing today. I had to... I had to think. Very well. What's well about it? Well, I'm glad you had time to think. Yeah, well, okay. By the way, I met Sai at the bar today. Really? Mitsu asked me, asked me without much interest. Yeah, I gotta say that she's weird. Yeah, weird. And she could do without prying into other people's businesses. What does she pry into? Well, you must know better than me. I don't know what she says about me, but... Nico, I'm capable of making my own decisions, she said in a bored voice. Of course, I didn't mean anything like that. It's just... Whatever, I'm not trying to say it like... I'm not trying to say that I... Bleh. I'm not trying to say I have to like all of your friends. That's nice. We kept silent for a while. So, did all of those, all of those thoughts bring you to any conclusions? Were they about Caddy? No, 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 of course not. I felt like Mitsu would pretty much explode at any mention of Catherine. I mostly wanted to check if I'm being watched. So are you? Mitsu perked up. I don't know. Even if someone is watching, they're very good at it. Indeed, Soviet intelligence agencies, as well as the other players, hadn't shown themselves in any way in the past two days. <laughs> of course Mike wouldn't complain that wasn't much of a time frame to draw any broad conclusions but it gave me at least some respite just to sink ever deeper into my personal drama for whatever reason I couldn't bring myself to call out our love triangle of melodrama maybe tragedy was a better word for it so what do you think uh, I think so far we're managing not to attract too much attention, and there's a good chance it'll stay like that. I really hope so. So do I. I'm really sick of this uncertainty. Me too looked at me attentively, but said nothing. By the way, dinner was very good, thank you. So, did you talk about me with Saya? Kind of, but you know her better than I, and you know everything she could tell me. I guess. Nico, she really isn't a bad person, just a bit harsh sometimes, but it's not out of malice. Good intentions pay the road to hell, you know. Although she'd be more of the gatekeeper, meeting new arrivals. Mitsu laughed, but quickly caught herself and frowned. Hey! I'm serious. On the other hand, she could get an offer to uh, Sharon's job. Would be much better than the original anyway. She'd entertain her passengers with her grumbling along the way. Can you imagine Sai in a robe? I pulled a tower over my head and made a face. Nico, stop it! She kept laughing. Hang on. I jumped up from the bed, ran to her, and threw the towel over her face. You're doomed to endless suffering in hell for having overdone the tofu. Nico. Mitsu kept desperately resisting and pushed me away. I lost my balance and fell to the floor, taking her with me. You dare, mortal? You have the courage to oppose the will of Hades? For a while, we struggled, and soon I ended up atop of Mitsu, holding her hands firmly in mine. Which would already be quite a precarious position to be in, but it was also exa exacerbated by the fact that Mitsu's face flushed and hair scattered on the floor. We felt quiet simultaneously, and she no longer laughed. In the descended silence, only the sound of our heartbeats could be heard. 
The tension even halted in the air in my lung even halted the air in my lungs. Nico, I want I didn't play the fool and play and specify exactly what she wanted. I simply kept silent. Mitsu lay there unmoving still. Whatever happened now, she wouldn't take the initiative. But as bad luck would have it, I remember Catherine again. God damn This fucking guy. I remember Catherine again and that day in the park two years ago. I couldn't do this to him, Mitsu. First, I had to sort it, sort it out myself and my feelings towards each of them. Okay, at least he's got some level of, like... I don't know what, what, what you would call it, but he's, he's thinking. I let go of her hands and fell to the floor next to her. Sorry. What are you apologizing for? Self-awareness. Thank you, Mike. Oops, I bumped the table. She immediately and happily responded. I'd like to remind you that we've got school tomorrow. Mitsu painfully pinched my side. I'm blaming it on my keyboard. <laughs> Still, I was grateful for her tactfulness. What the hell? Hang on. I don't know why my Norton antivirus just popped up suddenly. Anyways. That was yet another thing to add to the others. I was grateful to her for. It's war then! I grabbed the pillow. Exhausted, we were laying on the bed, resting. It was nine o'clock. It's so late already, Mitsu suddenly realized. I wouldn't say it's particularly late. I still need to do homework for tomorrow. They gave us a lot. And someone made me so nervous today that I had other things on my mind. I wonder who that might have been. All right, I'm leaving. She stuck her tongue out at me and left, flashing a goodbye smile. When I was left alone, I took a deep breath and immediately felt overwhelmed without a prelude or a preface. I could have... What am I doing? A sense of guilt was burning me from the inside. My broken heart joined the chorus, making my existence virtually unbearable. I seemed to be suffocating, burning at the same time, as if ending up in the real hell. Excuse me. It was absolutely impossible to remain in the silence and solitude anymore. Okay, I recognize Elisa. I don't recognize the other lady. Hastily trudging through the puddles, I reached the nightclub. My consciousness kicked in. I was sitting behind a table densely covered by beer mugs, shots, and rocks glasses drowning in the clouds of cigarette smoke. My thoughts were tumbling over each other, but my goal, my main goal had been achieved. I had managed to calm down. Even if it was achieved this way by drinking myself to unconsciousness. Some band was playing on the stage, but I wasn't in any condition to listen properly. The rhythmic drum of the speakers was more than enough. Suddenly, an unfamiliar guy sat at my table and started to speak quickly. Although it was more like he was opening and closing his mouth like a fish in water. Huh? What? I can't hear you. I moved closer. I'm saying it's nice to see a European here, he said in English. I didn't even notice right away that he wasn't Japanese. Uh, yeah. Where are you from? I live nearby. No, I mean from what country? USSR, I replied after a pause. My perception of reality was significantly clouded by the alcohol, but I still couldn't count on Kobayashi Corporation and the KGB to suddenly leave me alone. And I'm... He said where he was from, but I couldn't hear or decided not to ask again. Ed! The guy stressed his hand out to me. 
Ed what? My name's Ed. What's yours? Nick. I shook his hand. You come here often? Sometimes. I'd guess you're slightly over 20, but all in all, Ed possessed an absolutely forgettable appearance. Were I to be interrogated the next day, I wouldn't be able to name any characteristics. No long hair, big nose, no scars or birthmarks. You could say it was a very fitting appearance for a spy. Or an intelligence officer, depending on your perspective. I'm here on tour with my favorite band. He shouted the name so loudly that it even that it even overpowered the buzzing of the guitars and I still couldn't make it out. They're headlining today. Yeah? You seem to be just a regular music fan rather than a spy. And down a shot of whiskey, courteously offered by Ed. Then another one, and the guy quickly began to seem like a wonderful person. Listen, Ed. I was tripping over my tongue, but a drunk always understands another drunk. They're on the same page, so to say. Do you, do you have someone? I mean, girl? Yeah. My wife was waiting for me at home. Wife? S serious? I, I see. And you? And me? I sighed and down to half, gla half a glass of beer in one go. <laughs> Look at what we did with our gunship. <laughs> Hell no, what's going on in my life? I am even have two. <laughs> well, I mean, not two wives, two girls, and I don't even know who to choose. What does your heart tell you? Heart? Is it ever that easy? That only works in books. In stupid books. Okay, let's try a different approach. Which of them seems to be the lesser evil? What do you mean? I asked, startled. It turned out to be less drunk than me after all. Well, which choice would you make lose less? Wait, which choice would make you lose less? Which choice would harm others less? Well... If you put it that way, Catherine can live without me for sure. She's been doing all right for the la last year and a half. But Mitsu, well, I wouldn't say she'd off herself, but who knows though. Is it that serious? He asked compassionately. No, it's just in the context of this discussion, you know. Ah. From what you said, it seems like this Imitsu is just dependent on you. Dependent? No way, we're not like... A determined psychology. You, on the other hand, are dependent on Catherine. I'm not dependent on anyone! I felt resentment growing inside me. I'm just trying to help, bro. Cool down. Better get another round. And what does your psychology suggest to do in my case? I asked, after giving his words a bit of thought. Getting rid of the dependency? By getting rid of the dependency? Do you mean the way they usually do it in Hollywood films? You think I should shoot Catherine? I laughed out, uh, laughed loudly. But then Imitsu would have to shoot me. In reality, there wasn't anything funny about that, especially in my situation. Especially considering that I could actually catch a bullet at any moment. There are easier ways, for example, visiting a psychologist. A psychologist? Are you serious? I'm gonna tell him that Catherine's mother was involved in my parents' death and I'm haunted by the most powerful corporation in Japan but can't think about anything but love simultaneously feeling guilty about my childhood friend who also built a dependency on me. No, I couldn't say that. It might be a good idea, though. They'd sent me to the madhouse right off. Oh wait, no, that was, that was Nick. I'd definitely be safe there. You're taking it too close to heart. Making a tree out of a molehill. What? No, Ed, I think you're shit-faced. This mistake entertained me a lot and distracted me from my dark thoughts. Well, I'm still doing better than you. I guess so. And you're older, although I'm trying to... Oh, I am trying to become a worthy... 
Alchemarathoner. Is that even a word? Not bad, but be careful with that, otherwise you might never reach the finish line. We'll all reach the finish line one way or another, just the difference is different for everyone. Suddenly the crowd grew silent, and after some time an intro from a famous song came out from the speakers. Oh, here they are, let's go to the stage. I did know this band, which made me even more surprised to see them at such a mediocre club. The furious energy of the music and the roaring crowd soon washed over me and made me forget about my problems. When the performance was over, I even sobered up a bit, but Ed approached me immediately with a couple beer cans in his hands. Here, try this. It's a new one. We brought some with us. I took a few gulps and that was just enough. Concert hall started to blur before my eyes. Oh, he drank the Kool Aid. You know, Ed, you're a cool guy. Really cool. Pity there's no such guys here, you know. If you want, you can continue in my place, an after party, so to say. I'd like to, but I still need to help the band load their equipment. Then I will help as well. I tried to stand up, but instead fell to the floor and immediately burst out laughing. Whoops, I seem to be having trouble navigating. The next words Ed said seemed to, seemed to sound somewhere far away, like the yell of a captain of a ship passing by in the fog. Sit here for a bit. We'll drive you home. I will. Why not? I barely managed to climb on the chair and started to look for booze. And of course... I found it soon. Where are we going to wake up at? September 17th. People say you should love yourself. I guess it's not that simple or obvious to everyone. But I'm confident everyone can hate themselves. The only requirement is to drink a life-threatening amount of something combustible. Oh, he actually made it back home. I woke up and lay in bed for some time, staring at the ceiling, struggling to understand who or where I was. I can't even recall how I got home yesterday. Or to be more precise, this morning. My last memory was that of uh, was of that conversation with Ed. And it seemed to be after midnight. What time was it when I woke up? The arrow pointed straight through the rush to the Roman numeral I. So I'd, what is up with this music? So I'd slept for almost two hours, almost 12 hours? And why did I feel like shit? It's called a hangover, dude. Although it was equally possible I'd gotten away home later than I thought. The headache and nausea wouldn't let me stay in bed, but as soon as I stood up, the whole world shifted under my feet, forcing me to lie down again. I grazed to let my leg against the table, knocking a piece of paper off of it. Nico, you can't drink like this. I found you in the hallway this morning and barely, just barely dragged you to your bed. I'll drop by after school. I'll make sure you won't be able to go anywhere. I'm sure you won't be able to go anywhere, even if you intend to. Don't even think about it. It was written in Russian with Mitsu's beautiful, neat handwriting. Once I completely agreed with her. Moreover, I was insist on reinstituting prohibition. And in that comment, Mike suddenly hates this guy even more. Half an hour in the bathroom somewhat brought me to my senses. Not really, though. I barely regained the ability to move or la move more or less steadily without even without every motion causing my head to ache. The 
There were Tsukimono at the table. No pickle juice, sure, but... Anything I wouldn't immediately vomit back out was good for me. And I managed to eat them without much difficulty. Tsukimono, what's that? I'm not familiar with that one. I felt somewhat better after restoring balance, the balance of electrolytes in my body, even if not for long. Well, now being sour, sober, I just realized that yesterday I had been drinking way more than that Ed guy. While he was nursing a single beer, I would finish a couple glasses of whiskey, maybe a few shots of tequila on top of that. I was accelerating as if, I, as if late for my train to hell. Ed. What an interesting guy. His words made me think about a number of things, but their true meaning was only coming through now. Of course, he didn't really say anything new, just described my condition in brief. With a few accurate and hard-hitting statements. They're just pickles. Oh, okay. Explains the pickle juice. However, even that can be enough sometimes. The facts themselves don't change, but their interpretation does. Objective and subjective levels of existence. The struggle between perception and reality. The loud ring of the doorbell pierced my brain like lightning. My headache returning at once. Ugh, who the hell's there? I sat quite loudly and opened the door. Catherine was sitting at the door, was standing at the doorstep. What a surprise! I was genuinely surprised. <laughs> Is this a bad time? As you can see, it is. While in the bathroom, I had to look myself in the mirror and harbored no doubt that my condition was self-evident. Not that Catherine, Catherine was surprised in the first place. Looking at her, I recalled Ed's words about the uh, dependency. After, after all, the girl standing before me wasn't the same as two years ago, and she definitely wasn't the image from my dreams. Frankly speaking, I wasn't completely sure whether I loved this Catherine. At least whether I loved her as strongly as before. Didn't bring any gifts? I grinned, letting her pass at the kitchen. I wouldn't refuse a can of beer. I have something important to discuss. She ignored my words and sat down with her legs crossed. I'm listening. She wouldn't have come to my place without a reason anyway. It was clear that we were going to talk about something of critical importance. I've talked to my mom about everything. About that phone call, you and your parents. She didn't want to explain anything for a while, but I insisted. To cut a long story short, you don't need to worry about anything anymore. Could you not cut the long story? As is, this doesn't sound very convincing, to be honest. She used to be indirectly related to your parents' work. You know they worked on an important project, right? I nodded. Even though I hadn't known about it until a couple days ago. It turned out that things were going smoothly, and... Catherine went silent, frowned, and looked away. Look, Nick, I know it may come as a shock to you, but they were suspected of being Russian spies. What? The lips stretched into an idiotic smile. And even if that were the case, was that a reason to kill them? Now it was Catherine's turn to be surprised. Kill? No! It was an accident. It's just that some questions related to their work may have, been, have been raised recently. My mom told me all about it. And you believe her? Naturally? I sighed. Now I definitely needed some beer. Why shouldn't I believe her? Indeed, if I only took the facts into account, her mother's story matched pretty well with the Ichina says. Except they had different narratives. He was blaming the corporation for everything that happened, while Catherine's mother was trying to cover up this accident by making culprits of the Soviet engineers. You don't believe me, she said as a statement, not a question. I do, or to be more precise, I believe that you believe it. But I have no reason to believe your mother, because... Was I supposed to tell her about my conversation with Chinose? There was a little chance it, it would put her at risk, but I still didn't want to take the chance. 
think for yourself. What would you do in my place? I, I don't know, but I'm sure my mom would couldn't could never do anything like that. Like what? Strictly speaking, I never accuse her mother of being personally involved in my parents' death. Was she involved indirectly? It was that was possible. Was she involved in the project? No doubt. But it was obvious that she hadn't been the one to issue the order. Anyway, I'm grateful that you came and told me everything. How couldn't I? Catherine asked, surprised. Oh, I'm sure you know enough ways how couldn't. Do you still take me for the devil incarnate? I didn't know if that was a hangover or some veil of Katya's divinity. I had been lifted from my perception, but I felt much more comfortable around her. Most likely because she was just behaving normally, trying to maintain some minimal level of courtesy. I just don't have any reason to trust your mother, but I understand you and don't blame you. Of course you don't. Or not. I agree that the situation is complicated, but if you think about it, my mother didn't say anything. Objectionable. Of course, if you want to pick apart the wording. Yeah, I'm not... I'm used to not doing that with you. I jabbed, but Catherine seemed to pay no attention to it. What do his parents have to do with this? They're long dead. Why should we do this? If you're so interested in him, handle it by yourselves. You call that nothing objectionable? I'm remembering her words correctly, right? They were connected through work somehow. I have already told you. On the other hand, if I disregarded how I was, pers I was personally involved here, there was some logic to it. I could easily imagine a situation where Mrs. Winters had nothing to do with all this. But I absolutely didn't want to believe that, and with good reason. Fine, I got you, I said dryly. Whatever the cause, arguing with Catherine would be of any help to either of us. I'm glad. Not that she looked particularly satisfied. For a moment, I even had thought that Katya was displeased by the fact that I was speaking to her so coldly with, some, with no mention of love till death do us part. Anything else? No, that's all. She stood up, smoothed her skirt, cast an appraising glance over the kitchen and bid me farewell. Enjoy your hangover. After seeing her out, I felt proud of how much resilience I'd shown. Thank you, Ed. Still, it took me some time to fully digest our conversation. The clock read four, but Himitsu still hadn't come. Oh, oh man. Logically, she shouldn't have ru she should have rushed to my place right after school. I guess I even wanted that. That marathon yesterday managed to fulfill his objective. Blunted my sense of guilt and I could look her in the eye with relative ease. Why not take the initiative then? A minute later, I was enthusiastically ringing the doorbell of Mitsu's house. However, her father answered the door instead of her. Nikolai? Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, ryosuke san Is Mitsu home? She went out to do some shopping. Oh. Then I'll drop by later. It's fine. Come in. You can wait here. She'll be back soon. Uh, sorry to bother you. I used the standard Japanese form of politeness. Or is that, um, sumimasen? Perhaps it wasn't by habit, but Ryunosuke-san commanded respect by appearance alone. Tall, especially for Japanese, always serious, and even some somehow overtly collected man, he didn't waste time on idle gossip, and I couldn't recall ever seeing him smile. How you doing, Nikolai? Mitsu's father asked me in the same tone. I wonder if he noticed my obviously poor condition. I really hoped he didn't. I'm doing all right. And you? He looked at me closely. Was it an um, inappropriate question? I'm fine. I heard your mutual friend has returned to Japan. Catherine, right? Yes. Yes. 
Mitsu definitely shouldn't have told that to her father. Who needed that? I see. Awkward pause dragged on. Ryanosuke was just sitting on the sofa, keeping his eyes fixed on me. It was frankly making me feel uncomfortable. Finally, the front door opened, and I could hear footsteps coming through the hall. I'm home. Mitsu appeared in the living room with bags in her hands. Oh, Nico! She exclaimed, having noticed her father and caught herself. So glad you came. Wait, I, I won't be long. She rushed to the kitchen to unload the bags. I won't bother you. Yonosuke bid his farewell. I nodded, trying not to be too cur courteous this time. Well, when the door closed behind him, Mitsu virtually assaulted me. Nico! Would you dare deign the deign to explain what was that what that was yesterday? That's what I'm here for. I relaxed into the armchair and smiled. She clearly hadn't expected this kind of reply. Well, that's good, of course, but I just couldn't handle the stress. I needed to relax. So you think drinking yourself into oblivion is a good way to relax? Whatever works. Try not to relax so much when you're able try not to relax so much so so but try not to relax so much you won't be able to tense up again. She said in a grim voice and returned to the kitchen. We're going to have dinner soon. I didn't want to and couldn't eat at all, but there was no option to refuse the invitation either. When were you at school the last time? Do you even remember? Well, Tuesday? Tuesday. She grumbled and put her chopsticks away. That was a signal that I didn't have to force myself on anyone, force myself anymore. Ooh. Anyway, morning pickles were more than enough for me. Nico, this is no joke. Nobody's laughing, you know. You know, like in that joke when I wanted to become a comic and everyone was laughing at me, but guess what? Now I am one, and nobody's laughing anymore. Mitsu sighed and shook her head. Now it's just that I feel like I'm not myself these days, but over yesterday and today, I'm giving it some thought and reevaluated my life a bit. Successfully? I don't know yet. It's too early to draw conclusions. Apparently she was still upset, but she was taking was talking a lot less than usual. How was your day? As usual. My days goes always go as usual, Nico. Perhaps I didn't ask enough about Mitsu's life, or more precisely about the part that wasn't related to me. But how could she blame me if it was, if it was always the usual for her? So nothing new at all? Well, Sai told me you were rude to her yesterday. Yeah. Guess she didn't notice the industrial timber complex in her own eye. Mitsu smiled. But this time she wasn't swearing about you that much, so you can be proud of yourself. What an achievement. If you would pay attention pay more attention to other people. Well, who do I care about your Saya? You should treat others like you want to be treated yourself, and treat and you treat everyone terribly. Well, I treat you okay. That's what you think. Mitsu said quietly. What? Oh, sorry. I had to admit, her words stung. Still, I didn't care what this Saya and the rest of and the rest like her thought of me. I even knew perfectly well that I acted like a pig to Mitsu. But when she said it herself, I recalled Ed and applied and his applied psychology again. Psychoanalysis is, at its core, the process of structuring thoughts, sorting them through so that each has its own purpose. Or purpose or place? Is that each has its own place? Try throwing all your stuff in one big box for years and then try and find something you need in a couple minutes. So what are you guys preparing for the school festival? I tried to change the topic rather awkwardly. I've already told you. A cafe. 
I immediately wanted to see Mitsu in a maid uniform, though I didn't say it. Don't worry. I do too. I'm sure the food will be delicious. If you're in charge of cooking, then definitely. Other girls can cook too. Definitely not as well as you. You'll try it when you come by. I definitely will. Uh, by the way, let me handle the dishes. Oh, that's not too much effort for you? Oh, that's not too much effort for you? We'll just have to wait and see. It's interesting how something as ordinary as a kitchen sink can be so dissimilar for in each individual house. Literally in its every aspect, the tap, the handles, the location of the drain, the sponges and the rags. The pressure was remarkably strong and the water didn't splash all over the kitchen like at my place. Oh, it was remarkably strong, but the water didn't splash all Well, you can understand, you can't underestimate how well thought modern houses are. Should we go out somewhere? I still feel guilty because of what happened yesterday, and a few words weren't going to change that. I needed something much more substan substantive. I've never seen that word before. Go where? Needs to ask. She had already turned on the TV and was watching a soap opera. We could just walk around or go to the cinema. Do you want to watch a movie? I don't know. She said, not expressing much interest. What's the movie about? Uh, some sort of science fiction, I guess. Is it scary? Mitsu didn't like horror films. Uh, I have to admit, I share the sentiment, though for different reasons. Well, we can watch it and see if it is. She turned the TV down and after a few seconds said merrily, You choose. On the one hand, I wanted to watch a new movie, but on the other, I knew what. Uh, on the other, I knew what happens with Himitsu in a cinema when some sort of paper mache monster appears on screen. A simple walk wasn't that dangerous, but of course, it wa wasn't that entertaining either. I'm interested. I want to see what this movie is. It's expected to be silent during the movie, and I wasn't in the mood to talk to her. I had no problem with being attentive and spending time together, but I couldn't get Catherine's morning visit out of my mind. Felt like she came for the sake of decency rather than out of any worry for me. Like a mother who spends her child apolog apologizing before the kid had, for the kid that child had stolen the toy. From, what? What? Like a mother, like if a mother who sends her child to apologize before the kid that child that child had stolen the toy from at a playground. That's a, that was worded weird. Responsibility, servitude, obligation. Catherine was trying hard to show that she was doing all this because she, she had rather she had to rather than wanted to. Had to rather than wanted to. I'm like, am I reaching that point where I'm like struggling to say anything? And that indeed it was only raising a few questions. What? Why would she need to prove her innocence so desperately? After all, an uneasy conscience betrays itself. Nico? We should go to the cinema. Well, if it's a horror movie, it's on you. All of the showings of the film I wanted to watch were in the evening, so we had to go for... We had had to go for a sob melodrama that almost made me fall asleep. Mitsu, on the other hand, um, on the contrary, obviously liked it a lot. Since from the middle of the film she started sobbing louder and louder and by the finale her, was crying her eyes out. 
That movie was great. It's a pity real life isn't like that at all. We walked out of the cinema and bought two ice cream cones. Vanilla for me and strawberry for Imitsu. Obviously. Why? Brain cancer is a common issue these days. The protagonist falls in love with a girl unaware that she's gravely ill and only has a month left to live. Is that a real movie? 1987. Hardly gets more banal than that. You've ruined it again. You made a bad writer. So a writer needs to lack logic? A writer needs to have empathy. Stop grumbling. Why should I feel sympathetic over some clear, clearly contrived story? Especially considering the 30-year-old 30, uh, 30 high schoolers. That's not true. She's only 25. Mitsu frowned and bit her ice cream with near hatred. What's good about your science fiction books? That's where there's, that's for uh, where there's a lack of logic. Nothing's real. Sounds like a fault in our stars. We'll walk from. Yeah, those are pretty recent. I'm trying to think that like what would have come out in like 1987. Or 86, somewhere around that time frame. They're just metaphors. I tried to come up with an excuse, but Imitsu continued. You would have definitely liked the movie if it was happening on another planet. Or, say, if there was a breakup instead of a disease. She would break up with him and fly to the other end of the galaxy, while he would freeze himself to wait for her. The conversation was getting dangerous. That's a wonderful story. You should write it down. However, laughing it off didn't work. I haven't come up with an ending yet. Mitsu responded angrily and, and bit out a huge chunk of ice cream again. This time it didn't go well. Ouch! She rolled her eyes and started jumping in place. Oh, she get brain freeze? Trying to freeze yourself like in your novel? I asked her sympathetically and took the cone out of her hands. It's always like that with you. Mitsu grumbled, having come to her senses, and walked quickly onwards. After a breakup, the guy gets his memories wiped. That's a good story. Had she always managed to guess what I was thinking about so accurately? I wasn't enjoying these illusions to Catherine at all. If Mitsu were to continue with this train of thought, she would have come to observe... Blech. Come to absolutely absurd conclusions, get dramatic, find culprits, and then pass judgment to them. Oh, Eternal Sunshine? I have not seen that movie in ages. And it wasn't even in its full, in, in its uh, entirety. And all that would have happened based on emotions and feelings alone, with no consideration given to reality. Kate Winslet was in that? I know Jim Carrey was, but I didn't know Kate Winslet was in that. God, how long has it been since I've seen that? Take place on Long Island, kind of a certified hood classic. Hmm. I'll have to track that down. Maybe it was very woman-like, maybe it was very childish, but I had I had what I had and had to live with it somehow. I just followed Himitsu and in ten minutes we arrived at a park. It's so beautiful here. Nico, why, why do we come to this place so rarely? Yeah, not quite often. I smirked, but it sounded somewhat unnatural. Not that she was paying attention. Until now, I had only come here with Catherine. I wondered if Mitsu knew that. However, the fresh air did me good. The desire to make nasty jokes disappeared without a trace. You know, this really is a nice place. There you go. 
She smiled victoriously and took me by the hand. What would Catherine think if she saw us? Would she be so? Would she be jealous? I'm sorry I got dr so drunk yesterday. Oh well, bygones. What matters is making the right conclusions. But the part of me about making a bad writer was upsetting. Well, I didn't mean it. I'll give you a sarcasm, placard. To be honest, subtle humor wasn't Mitsu's forte. Keep joking, Nico, but time flies by. Flies where? There. Soon we'll need to enroll in college. Of course, she knew I wasn't going to continue studying, but continued to ignore that fact as if she had decided everything for me already. We've discussed this so many times already. Yes, and nothing changes. I'll need to live on something after school. My parents' money isn't endless, you know. I can always find a part-time job, or... She grew embarrassed and stopped talking. And the life philosophy of Himitsu, an idea was a basic universal organization, and it couldn't be divided into parts or didn't obey the laws of the macro world. One has to get an university education was an idea, while the hows and whys were completely irrelevant. Easy for you to say, I snapped at her, recalling that Catherine and I had more, had had more or less the same conversation in more or less the same place. Maybe I'd like to, except, oh, well, I don't know. I still need to live uh, to that moment, and right now I'm having difficulties with that too Nico Mitsu lowered her head and gripped my hand tighter I started to feel a bit uncomfortable we're just trying so hard to pretend nothing has changed I guess I wasn't the only one most I guess I was the one mostly responsible for that I was trying hard not to involve Mitsu in my problems never mind forget it Nico, what? I snapped. You're not helping at all. Only lamenting like an old woman. Oh, this fucking guy. An old couple was looking at us with clear interest, even a little unceremoniously. Perhaps we were probably that. Perhaps because we were speaking Russian. What are you staring at? I barked at them in Japanese. The oldies seemed immediately started looking around. the well, parked fearfully, as if searching for a policeman. Nico, have you gone completely mad? Mitsu hissed at me, quickly bowed and apologized and dragged me away. We walked out into the city where I was immediately received from... where I immediately received my dessert reprimand. You can't behave like that. I don't even have the words. All right. Sorry. I really did feel guilty. However, guilty who meets you rather than a couple of old strangers. It's all because of your drinking. You've completely lost yourself. I had zero desire to listen to this, but after what I'd done, interrupting her wasn't an option. Let's go home, I said, avoiding her eyes. We spent almost the entire walk back in silence. I was thinking that uh, I would have felt if Himitsu hadn't been around at that moment. Maybe nothing. Maybe I would have also told him to fuck off. When we arrived, I stopped and said, Alright, um, I'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah, bye. Himitsu replied briefly and left. Left too quickly, as if she were upset with me. Apparently I wasn't going to get dinner tonight. However, that seemed to be the least of my problems. For a normal person, it would have been e evening already, but I'd only woken up one, oh, bleh, only woken up at one o'clock, so I was still full of energy. My hangover had long retreated, allowing me to come to my senses and start to think constructively. And Catherine, this fucking guy.
was pretty much doing every was doing pretty much everything she could to kill my love for her. She was quite successful at it, I had to say. On the other hand, you can't instantly destroy what took years to emerge and grow stronger. Sure you can. A phone rang in the hall. It sounded dull and somehow phlegmatic. Hello? Hi, Nick. Are you busy? Michael's voice sounded calm and even as always, even pacifying to a degree. Uh, no, I just came back. I've been walking around with Hamitsu. Alright. I have something to talk about. Eye to eye. Can't we discuss this over the phone? Why the secrecy? No. He answered briefly and I started to worry. Secrecy meant a lot to me now. I assume we can't wait until tomorrow? No. I see. When and where? In the city center. In an hour. Alright, see you. I hung up the phone and let out a sigh. Uh, just come back and only manage to take my shoes off. Oh my god, this dude casually dresses like me. There is a definite way to just fall out of love within moments, then again, I can't tell if it's just my experience or if I'm a sociopath. <laughs> Michael was punctual and appeared on time, although I wasn't late either. At first I wanted to... I wanted to warn Himitsu, but uh, then I figured since I wasn't meeting with Catherine, Ichinose, or anyone else would make her concerned, I had nothing to worry about. As for Michael, whatever the subject of discussion would be, there was no reason to expect anything dangerous from him. Well, hi. Why the urgency? Well, let's find somewhere quiet first. You just sound like a real spy today. Michael didn't react to my joke, however. Which was to be expected, but I started to feel even more off. He led me to the park. Wasn't I coming here? Wasn't I coming here a little much these days? So? Drop the suspense. He sat in a bench far from the main entrance. Do you remember our conversation on Monday about my father's work in the Kobayashi Corporation? Uh, I do. Why? After all, I hadn't told me anything specific. Well, I couldn't get it out of my head, so I talked to my father. And? We may have to leave Tokyo, or even Japan altogether. He sighed and frowned, which, which for Michael could be described as an emotional storm. Something's, something is happening, Nick something serious and I think you might be in danger come on who am I to and this danger might be coming from Kobayashi Corporation you've asked about them yourself I couldn't play the fool around Michael he was too astute for that so I stopped smiling idiotically and looked away staring at the dark silhouette of the trees in the pond what exactly do you know? Nothing in particular, but my father was worried, and that doesn't happen often. Well, yeah, like father, like son. Even if there was something, it's fine now, if I were to believe Catherine. If I were you, I wouldn't just neglect. I'm telling you, it's all right. I grit my teeth and continue in a lower voice. Thank you for caring. The spirit of contradiction seemed to be strong in me. After all this madness I'd experienced in the last couple weeks, I finally managed to fix my relationship with Mitsu, handle the situation with Catherine to some extent, and nobody was following me anymore. At least not openly. And now I was going to start all over again? And who was informing me about this? Michael? It's as if, Chris, uh, it's as if a Christmas deer had brought me some news. On its, on its horns. Well, I just wanted to warn you. That's all I can do. Are you sure you're going to leave? I don't know yet. 
When will you know them? I can't say that either. Yeah, it just sounds like riddles and assumptions. Not enough to panic over, don't you think? Who's panicking? Due diligence never hurt anyone. What do you mean by due diligence? What should I do to the diligent? Buy a gun? I smirked. You can hardly do that here. But if we were in the US, I'd say it might be a good idea. Is it really that bad? Jokes like this weren't Michael's character were in Michael's character, and he seemed serious. I hope not. Either way, I couldn't tell him about my situation. Not because he would tell his father, but because the fewer people were involved, the better. Okay. Oh, don't take it so seriously. Who are we? We're just students. We're irrelevant. Maybe you're right. Michael responded after some time and stood up. It's late. Will you come to school tomorrow? I will. On my way back, I was constantly looking around and even chose a longer route to confuse my potential stalkers. However, it seemed like they were either not following me or following me too well. Of course, I couldn't get Michael's words out of my head, but it felt like I'd been, as, but it felt like I had been sedated. My own problems seemed distant, as if they belonged to a total stranger. Sometimes it can be almost impossible to break out of a negative perception of things and see the good aspects and positive changes in life. Or sometimes the overwhelming wave of positivity doesn't let you think straight and see things that aren't so rosy, are all so rosy, and that the enemy literally hides around the corner. I was walking down the streets of the Japanese capital and breathing rich autumn air. Did you feel sedated 2020, 24 hours? <laughs> oh, no. I feel like listening to that song now. Excuse me. My nose is running. Every season has its own outstanding smell. For summer, it's green grass, blossoming flowers, gentle sea breeze, soil and asphalt heated by the sun. But autumn brings along freshness and humidity of frequent rains, dampness of soiled leaves, the aroma of ripe apples, and rich scent of fermented plums. I forgot the pumpkin spice. To me, Autumn was the crowning achievement of creation, the final point and pinnacle of the cycle. For a couple weeks yet, we could enjoy soft, warm days and fresh, invigorating evenings, a whirlpool of colors of the withering tr nature and ripe, juicy fruits. And then the arrow of life soars over midnight to begin a new ascent, in th ascent to the summit through the long winter night. My big empty house greeted me with darkness I had already grown a bit unfamiliar with and dead silence. Somewhere deep inside, I was hoping that Himitsu would come after all. Or at least, would make dinner. Or even just left, leave a note. However, I, I wasn't particularly upset about that. After all, the... After all, the... Had gone pretty... What? Anyways... Neglecting the matter of dinner and feeling almost happy, I went to bed and quickly fell asleep. Mm. We'll go for a little bit more. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and stop here. New day. We'll stop. So. Interesting things have progressed.
So yeah, we'll pick this up again tomorrow. It's already almost two o'clock, so yeah, I should get. Uh, I should call it. But I'd like to thank you all for joining me tonight. I will we'll continue this tomorrow, same possible time, give or take. Yeah, my internet is still giving me problems at about like eleven thirty. So it seems to kind of like garden hose itself out by like ten till. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm not happy about that. It doesn't seem like it completely loses connection. It just drops really, really low. I have no idea what's going on, what's causing that, but it's always happening at the same time. Hopefully I've got somebody to look at it. Or at least... I don't know who would notice it at this hour. Aside from me. But oh, I guess I could make the complaint that saying that our internet is just being unreliable and probably just have them check it out, check out the uh, the box outside. But I don't know. Anyways, yeah, we'll continue this the same usual schedule. Uh, Wednesday we'll come back and we'll actually push to finish Metroid Prime Remastered because Friday we've got our first session. Hopefully, if I can get it, we got our first session of Resident Evil 4 Remake. That's gonna be fun. Um, it is going to be my usual stream time, uh, however, Backwin, our fellow uh, Lazy League streamer, he's going to do, he's going to do his, uh, he's actually going to uh, try and do Resident Evil 4 in one go, much like how he did uh, Callisto Protocol, so that's going to be interesting. I'll probably watch a little bit of it, just to avoid spoilers, maybe lurk, I don't know. What do you use to check internet speeds? Um, what's the word called? It's uh, the uh, speed test by Ookla. Yeah, because I tested on my laptop and then I tested again on my phone to see if there's any like differences and uh, difference in between them, and most of the time they're pretty even. They're about the same. So, but yeah, it's like take screen caps. Mm. It seems to happen to probably about maybe eleven twenty, eleven thirty ish. It, it just drops to like download two to one megabytes per second and about the same for for upload speeds where technically it's supposed to be uh, well over a hundred most of the time it usually is and then my upload is supposed to be at 10 they did nothing I switched. well at least you had the option to switch me I still live in a black hole And if they were deciding to finally expand into this region, we'd know about it because they'd have to run uh, fiber optic cables through everything. So once we notice that going on, then yeah. But that's 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 more of a uh, utilities thing. But anyways, I digress. Thank you all for joining me tonight. And yeah, plan more love money rock and roll tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, be the finale for Metroid Prime Remastered. And then um, Friday, Wednesday is Metro Prime Remastered. Friday is our start of Resident Evil 4 Remake. So that'll be the plan. And then once I finish uh, Love Money and Rock and Roll, uh, we're not going to spend, we're going to go immediately into another horror game. Much to everybody's enjoyment and not for mine. We're going to be playing the Dead Space Remake. So yeah, it's just an overload of horror. Woohoo. Anyways, uh, links down below. The first one will take you to the Lazy Leaks Discord. There you can be able to find the rest of us, such as Oh Hey Mike K, the Batgwin, Gumdolf, and many others in our circle of friends, such as Rainarchy, Warrix Zero, Shadow Knight, 98 Tough Love, C Plus Content, and many others in our circle. Come hang out with us. Come be lazy with us. It's always a fun time. Lots of, like, fun D, D stuff that we go all discuss about and some uh 
event streams where we would play Terraria or watch anime on the weekends. Uh, actually, we don't have any postings or Twitter and stuff like that. But yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff, a lot of memes posting, a lot of shit posting. Or as Mike would say, shit posting at the force of a thousand rectums. That needs to be a t-shirt, Mike. That really needs to be a t-shirt. Anyways, um, a second link will take you to the uh, sister site for this channel. Uh, I have updated it, but I still need to work on the um, updating the archive. So, yeah. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, or concerns that you would like me to know about, or any suggestions that you might have for me for future Let's Plays or Retro Nights, head on over to the contact page and shoot them out to me over there. Oh, it's from Civi? Yeah. No. Still, that's a great quote. Also, scroll down below or off to the side, depending on which platform you're watching from, to catch many other streamers that I personally watch, uh, watch and follow, but isn't connected or affiliated to any uh, any of the Lazy League or anything like that. But yeah, check them out whenever you can. They're all great. And again, thank you for joining me tonight for our first session of the week. We'll continue more with this tomorrow, and we'll see where things go. I have no idea how far I am in this game, to be honest. Um, and I don't want to look up to see if, like, a, a path guide or something like that, just for the sake of spoilers. But, uh, I don't know, we'll see. Anyways, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Love and hype. Life is good. Good night, everyone.